just keep doing that. Yeah, ev every vehicle has some sort of story to it. Right. At the end of the day, rescue is a team effort. Promote the service that we provide. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. It's also an opportunity for us to discuss fire safety. Um, Promoting, uh, promoting our message. Yeah, we've had a lot of interest. Um, it is confidential within Samaritans. Hi Martin, it's good to see you here today at Whitby's Emergency Services uh, Weekend. Um, what does your organisation organization do? So our organisation is Blood Run EVS, uh, we're a registered charity and basically our role as a charity is to save the NHS some money, um, provide early diagnosis for patients, reduce suffering and just be a transport link between hospitals after hours. Yeah, and what's your role in the organisation? Uh, so my role is chair. And where are you based? Uh, we're based in Teesside in North Yorkshire. So we cover a patch uh, from Peterley down to Fursk and as far over from Darlington, uh, as far over east as we need to be, Broughton, Saltburn and things like that. And how often are you called out? Uh, we're called out multiple times a day. So we're a 24 seven uh, courier service. Uh, we can range anywhere from one call a day up to 10 or 12. That keeps you pretty busy then? Yeah, everyone's very busy, yeah. yeah. And what, what can you tell us about the bike? Uh, so the, the bikes that we ride are all type approved. Uh, so that means they're basically the same bikes that the police would use, uh, just with different colours. So they're, they're designed to be on the road and do the job that they're doing. Uh, the trays on the back are designed to carry everything that the NHS would need us to carry. Um, so while the riders are on the road, they know they're safe and they've got the proper tool for the job. But well, it's good to see you here today. But why have you come? Uh, so we, we've been invited and basically we, we are an emergency service. Um, so if somebody needs help in a hospital, we're, we're there at the end of the phone and we will pick up whatever needs to be picked up. Whether whether it be a bag of blood, whether it be a, an urgent sample that needs testing, even as far down to equipment. And we've carried uh, stuff for premature babies. Uh, literally, if it needs to go, we will we will take it. Yeah. So it's just coming up to the first morning, end of the first morning. What's the reception been like so far from the public? Uh, a lot of people uh, come to, from, to Whitby from quite far afield. So some people haven't seen us, some people have. Uh, some people don't understand uh, why we're there. So we're, we're been explaining that to people uh, a lot of people don't know we're volunteers so we don't take any money everything that we raise from days like today goes into the fuel uh, servicing the bike tires on the bike uh, and keeping the cars on the road so literally nobody takes a penny so it's been worthwhile has it definitely yeah spreading awareness is, is, is really big for us yeah. it's a new kind of area for us to come into and um, we don't have to come over this far but it's been nice to see people you know respect the service and understand why we're here really so um, what can you tell us about where the bike came from? Uh, so this bike specifically, um, this came from the Masons. So there was an application put in because we needed a bit of help to get a few more bikes on the road. Um, and that, that was put in in 2017. Um, and the Mark Master Masons, which is the benevolent side of the Masons, uh, granted the application and basically donated the full bike. Um, so one of these back then cost around about 14,000 to have everything on the bike and, and delivered. Uh, so that was a, a, a massive uh, bonus to us to have that donated. Yeah. And you're happy with the bike? Yeah, we're, we're over the moon. Uh, it's the only type approved bike that we can get. Okay. Um, so it's either these or nothing. Yeah. Um, so we've got we've got another three of these bikes which are identical. Um, some have been donated. Um, so a uh, story of one of the bikes is called MD1. So my dad was a blood biker um, and in 2016 was involved in an accident and sadly killed while he was on blood duty. So me and the family raised money. Again, about 
£14,000 and donated that bike to the charity. So most of them comes from donations from businesses and, and individuals raising raising funds yeah. towards a vehicle. That's a sad story, but yeah, it, but it, it was a benefit to the organisation. Yeah, it was a definitely an uplift to try and pick up the organisation and really push it forward. And yeah. it, you know, we, we've we've come a long way since 2016. We had you know bikes that were kind of you know running at the ground, and you know we've now got four of these. We've got cars and vans, so mm. the charity's definitely on the up. Definitely, definitely yeah. on the up. Yeah, 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 good. yeah. And what can you tell us about the van behind? It's, it's in memory of Emily Hyde. What, what's the story behind that? Yeah, uh, so Emily Hyde. Uh, well, basically, Monroe School of Dance supporters is along quite quite a lot uh, over a year. Uh, they're, they're a dance school who do drama productions and stage. Um, it was through a volunteer that we got that connection, and basically Emily Hyde was 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 a young girl who was who was really ill. Um, and through all the shows through the year, at their last show, they raised quite a lot of money, and, and sadly she passed away. And so we decided that the money they raised would go towards a vehicle in her memory. Oh, so nice. there's a lot of vehicles we have like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. we've got one uh, called GC1. Jeff Cox who used to be a volunteer, who sadly died of COVID. So if you know, his family did exactly the same thing: raised money and uh, put another vehicle on the road. Okay. So yeah, ev every vehicle has some sort of story to it. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. lovely to hear those stories. Thank you yeah. very much, Martin. No, thank you. Yeah. Well, really pleased you came. No, thank you for having us. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. Thanks no. very much. Thank you. Well, welcome, Mark. For, thanks for being here today. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about what your organisation does, please? Absolutely. Uh, your Rescue Boat is an independent lifeboat uh, founded in 2014, uh, patrolling the rivers and uh, in York. And what sort of uh, shouts do you get? Uh, we get the usual variety of lifeboat jobs. Uh, a lot of what we do is mental health based. So a lot of suicide and despondence, sadly. Um, but we do missing person searches, right through to the usual things, dogs in the water, people that need assistance, all sorts. Yeah. And the boat behind, what's, what's that used for? The one we've brought with us today um, is a flood rescue boat. So we left our usual boat on the water in York in case that gets a shout whilst we're here. And uh, this is a very specialist shallow water flood rescue boat. So we're a nationally declared flood rescue team. We can be called anywhere in the country for major flooding events. And uh, how busy are you? As, as I think every lifeboat in the country, we're always busy. Um, I can't remember how, shouts, how many shouts we're on a year, but it averages about 60 to 70 shouts a year. Uh, that's quite a lot. This. And how many volunteers do you have? Uh, on the operational side, we've got around 30 volunteers. And then we've got a back room team that, that keep us going. So all the fundraisers, the admin people, the trustees, that, that help keep any charity going. Mm. And uh, how long have you been involved? I was in at the start. I was in, in 2014 at the first planning meeting we had where we didn't have a boat, we didn't have any premises, we didn't have anything really. <laughs> so I've been in from the, from the beginning. So you've come a long way in that time then? We have come a long way. We've now got three different boats and four different vehicles and it's, it's non-stop. Do you have any particular sponsors? Not, not on the whole, no. So we've got, we're very lucky. We've got families that give us uh, funds. We, we do collections. We do summer fakes. It, anything that will uh, keep the lights on. Right. Okay. A bit like all charities, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. All struggling to keep up the finances. All struggling. To, yeah. To, to service the public, yeah. really. And Indeed, and with increasing costs, you know, fuel bills have gone up exponentially in recent years, and yeah. insurance yeah. costs, everything yeah. goes up. Yeah. And how's it gone here today? It's been brilliant. Thank you for having us. It's, uh, it's nice. 
to work with the other statutory services and of course the other volunteer team. At the end of the day, rescue is a team effort. We're we're all on the same side, and uh, we all do the same same role together. Mm. We never go out on our own. It's always with somebody else. Mm. And members of the public have they been surprised about you and what you do? We do. We've got um, a lot of people are puzzled at having life but 40 miles inland, mm -hmm. which is not an unreasonable yeah. thing yeah. to wonder. Mm. Uh, we wondered if it would work when we first started it. Uh, Ten years on, we're pretty convinced we've got a good idea. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to see you here today. Thanks Thank very much for supporting Whitby Emergency Services Weekend. Thank you for having us on a great weekend. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, Flood water and, and driving boats in flood is very different to driving a boat at sea. So if you can imagine going down a street, you've got park benches, you've got rubbish bins, you've got submerged cars, and a propeller would hit every each and every one of those and, and slow your progress down. And the other thing is when you're working in the water around a boat in flood water, you don't want a propeller that's putting people's feet at risk. So this is a water jet powered outboard. It looks like an outboard at the top, the water jet at the bottom sucks water in, speeds it up, pushes it back out, and it means that we can use it in very, very shallow water. It's protected by the, the back of the boat, by the transom, so we can use it in shallow flood water um, without catching it on everything. Right, so you've done two minutes. Good. Wow. <laughs> and you'll just keep doing that. Then Do you know what? If you get tired, you have to swap with someone else that's with you. So you have to say, I'm tired, swap. Or ideally every two minutes. Right. One hand on top of the other. No, one hand up, that's it. That's it. That's, that's it. Good really position. hard. Should I deliver a shot? A bit higher. Yes. Yeah. A bit, bit more up to his head. That's it. Really hard, as hard as you can. Yeah, well, obviously, firstly, Mike, thank you very much for inviting us. Um, as, as you explained to us, it was an event um, to promote emergency services. And of course, as Samaritans, we do consider ourselves part of the emergency services. Um, so yeah, so that's why we're here today, to promote the service that we provide. It's good, and you're very, very welcome. Thank you for Thank coming you. and supporting us. <laughs> and um, what sort of um, interest have you had today? Yeah, we've had a lot of interest. Um, and I think it's just great to actually just get the name here, because obviously it's a busy, a busy time of year for Whitby. Um, there's been lots of people coming and going um, having the name here. Um, we have had some lovely conversations as well. We've had a, a lovely conversation with a chap who um, was interested in potentially joining Samaritans, so that's been lovely to have. Um, so yeah, lovely. And is the, the demand for your services has it got more or um, less? Well, recently? all I can say is I've been listening for two years now, um, so I don't know what it was like personally since before two years ago but what I would say is um, the demand is high um, where, whenever you go in to do your duty there is always people waiting on the uh, you know callers there is always callers um, uh, sometimes there's more callers waiting than others but most of the time there are callers you know waiting to, to, to be heard and how do people get in contact with you they they can the, the, the most common way is is 116123 our telephone number um, we do have an email facility as well and we do have um, a text message service but um, generally people ring us 116123 yeah, and is this a confidential service um, the the Samaritan the, the way I'll just try and explain how that works. When when people ring us, um, it is absolutely confidential within Samaritans. The, the systems that we have in place for supporting each other um, mean that we may, within the Samaritans organisation, we offload to our leaders. So it is confidential within Samaritans. We do also have safeguarding procedures, um, which might entail that we may need to contact other emergency services under certain circumstances where safeguarding uh, 
is concerned. But essentially, uh, we are able to advise our callers that um, you know what they say is confidential within Samaritans. Yes. Yeah. And how do you know afterwards that you've done some good? It's it's very difficult. To t well, I was about to say it's very difficult to tell, but a lot of the time it's actually really easy to tell because when a caller first starts talking to you on the phone, you know they, they they're down here often, and and often at the end of half an hour, three quarters of an hour, you can just feel the difference. You can feel that somebody's just come up a level, and yeah. um, you can often find that you'll have a little chuckle at the end of the phone call with that caller um, on on something that's you know be, be, quite light. Um, you can just tell. <laughs> and people who are watching this, what would your message be to them if they're feeling somewhat discomforted or? uncertain or even frightened yeah I mean the, the, it, absolutely the, 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 the thing is to talk um, to talk and if you don't feel you've got anybody you know friends family that you can talk to Samaritans is we're here 24 hours a day seven days a week 116 123 and we're here to listen and um, just to, to talk and we are here to listen that's a lovely message to give out thank you very much Paula. thank you mike <laughs>